Welcome to Context Free. It's time for an update on Taka, my WebAssembly Web GPU runtime. Last time, I showed this demo where I also have keyboard control. But the issue is that there's an awful lot of code to do that because Web GPU is so awkward to work with. It also includes this code as well, some of the support that I wrote based on a tutorial I was looking at. And while it's good to support the standard webgpu.h header so that people can agree on these things, and for example, probably would not be that hard to implement in Dawn, whereas I'm implementing in the Rust-based WGPU ecosystem, it's not very fun to code to this if you're just writing a simple program directly as opposed to using some kind of framework or game engine. So in addition to my relatively simple taka.h that I have here for a little bit of keyboard control and window interaction. I've also now got my own gpu.h, which does include the standard web gpu.h to some extent for things like the wgpu texture format, but all the functions I'm using are right here. And this gives you the basics you need to get a window up and running and call into some shaders and write a bit of geometry and even a little bit on textures also. Now, I probably need to refine this abstraction some. I don't think I have everything I need to have here, like for instance, different shaders for different pipelines, but I want it to be approximately this simple. Again, here's my old code, which is way too long. 622 lines there, 125 lines there, and I have some data here as well. I'm gonna be using the same data in the simplified version, but I'm going instead through that new gpu.h, which is a simpler interface, if all I wanna do is basic stuff. I'm also still using the Z algebra library for doing a bit of linear algebra inside my Zig program. And I do have to say that implementing all this stuff in the Rust implementation to make this work was a pain. I'm doing a lot of actually storing those buffers for you so I can piece it all together in the end. I suspect that among other things, those are the kinds of tricks that friendly game engines have to play. In addition to the many other features you expect a game engine to have. So mostly all I'm doing here is putting together some vertex attributes for the position, norm, and color of each vertex, compiling the shader, creating a buffer, and some additional globals, and I create my texture and start listening. Now the window listen is very similar here to the previous version. That's not what's changed much. The texture creation is a bit simpler. And actually I didn't even demo textures in my previous video. It's something that I added minimal support for so far. I'm not sure I have everything that needs to be there. And this is from the same tutorial I was looking at last time, where it just procedurally creates a texture for use and a relatively small texture at that, 256 by 256. Here I'm handling key press, and here's the redraw, which is much simpler than before. And I'm using the same shader as before. So the version we just saw with the full webgpu.h interface is gonna be the same as right now, same shader. And actually, if you look carefully there, you'll see that texture that I'm drawing in the background, not on the surface of the pyramid itself. And I don't have any control for the background color, so I'm just defaulting that to black. And we see here that even though I have many fewer lines of code, only 185 lines versus the 622 plus 125 from before, I'm only marginally smaller than before. Apparently a fair amount of the excess bulk of code isn't actually contributing a lot to high entropy in terms of the efficient WASM encoding. But anyway, now that I can make something simpler, it makes it more fun to use a variety of languages. So the next thing I want to demo is some Nalua that I wrote. Nalua is a systems language that's designed to look and feel like Lua. Now, I actually don't have very much Lua experience, so I don't really know a lot what I'm doing here, but I went through some tutorials. Now, Nalua even supports a certain amount of garbage collection, though I'm not making use of it here. I think it's actually likely to be able to work if I'm using it correctly. I was basing some of this on WASM4 demos from the past and the WASM4 implementation for use of Nalua there. WASM4 is a fantastic WebAssembly fantasy console that I featured in the past before on my channel. I highly recommend checking it out. And in fact, I also recommend taking a look at this ambient runtime, which also does WebGPU like Taka does, but it's more of a full purpose game engine with a lot more features than what I'm ever planning to have in Taka. My hope, for example, is that Taka, the core runtime can be implemented in a very thin layer 
on just WebGPU and Wasmus support that's already in browsers, though I haven't done that yet. But Ambient is far more full featured, so you might consider looking into that. Anyway, back here to Nalua and Taka. I set up my uniforms. I have some vertex data. In this case, I'm mostly just going to draw a rectangle to the screen that I can use for just playing shaders on. Sort of similar to Shader Toy, if you've ever been to this website and the awesome demos people have done here. And at first for my demo for this video, I was considering porting this No Man's Starfield to WGSL, but I ended up not going that far and instead just using the same noise shader that was being used here for a simpler kind of demo. But anyway though, I have a rectangle, which only needs one attribute for that position. And in Nalua, you also have access to plain old Lua that runs at compile time. So that's how your metaprogramming works in Nalua, is writing Lua code. And so, for example, in my support here, I have this Lua function I defined called read all. And then I'm loading up shaders from multiple other files and combining them together and storing it into a local string at compile time. Then I create my shader. I tell Taka I want to listen to window events. And I handle keys. And here's my basic drawing again. And as I mentioned, I really don't have lots of experience in Lua or in Lua, so I may have done some things in a less than ideal fashion here. I do have this support file where among other things, I've taken things out of webgpu.h or just my gpu.h and taka.h so that I can interface to those functions that I'm importing from the runtime. And then I just build my Nalua to Wasm and then I run my Wasm with Taka. So let's try that out. And here's my demo. I can go full screen. Now I found that OBS has a tendency to slow down this demo here. It's sometimes a little bit choppy anyway, but it gets really bad while OBS is running because apparently I don't have a very amazing graphics card to keep OBS and my shaders running at the same time. But I can go up and down and left and right through added octaves of simplex noise that I colored to look sort of like wispy clouds in the sky. I can also move forward and backward through the 3D space. So forward and backward, you can see what's happening here. So this is one slice inside of a not infinite, but relatively large space that I can create procedurally with fragment shaders or pixel shaders. And here's what that shader looks like. Here's my added octaves. So for example, if I comment just that part out and I run again, apparently I did something wrong. Aha, I need a semicolon. And let's keep full weight on the noise here. You can see more what this raw simplex noise looks like. And what I mean by octaves is that I have different frequency levels of how like zoomed in or out I am and how small the noise is, and then adding those up in different weights. My vertex shader is simple, I just pass along. My fragment shader is I add up these octaves of simplex noise and then I color it according to the scheme I want and send it out. This noise shader is one that I got from a GLSL implementation that I had used previously from a third party. And I ported it, making minimal numbers of changes to convert it from GLSL to WGSL. And I learned some differences in the process. So for example, you can define your functions in arbitrary order in WGSL. And there's also local variable type inference in WGSL. Though there's probably a lot of things I haven't learned yet about the differences. Anyway, this is the update so far. And like I said, for very basic programs, the bindings are much simpler to create. I might even make them in some kind of uh, IDL format in the future to make it easier to automatically convert them to different languages. But it is a lot easier to play with already. Still mostly on Linux. I hope to create a Windows port in the future. I don't have a Mac computer. Maybe someone wants to help me out with that part. But I think it's becoming a little bit more fun and a little bit easier to play with. I hope this has been fun, and I'm hoping to talk more about Taka in the future, as well as my hobby programming language Rio that I discussed last time. And I hope to compile that to WebAssembly someday. Anyway, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.